In lesson 5.1, students read a short story that sets up a problem where a cell phone has sunk in a body of water. So the question is whether a product could be designed that would make a cell phone float using a chemical reaction. So students use the engineering design process to define the problem, develop possible solutions, and then test and optimize the design. Let's see how it works. So the first part of the lesson is having a discussion with students about the design process. If they already have a problem that a cell phone can sink in water and that they need to develop possible solutions to this problem. They need to think about the considerations that will make the design successful, like it needs to be lightweight, whatever chemicals they use as the reactants, there needs to be a small amount of them, it needs to somehow be attached to the phone, so when the chemical reaction happens, and let's say a gas is produced, the phone will rise. They also have to think about the considerations that might make it difficult to come up with a successful design. Like, maybe they'd have to use too much of each chemical to produce enough gas to make the phone float. Or the device might be so big or awkward that it would be difficult to attach to a cell phone. So the first thing they need to do is come up with reactants that will produce a gas, that'll inflate some kind of bag that'll make the cell phone float. So they test two different substances, citric acid and cream of tartar. And you would help students design the experiment to be sure that it's a fair test. You use the same amount of baking soda in the graduated cylinders and the same amount of citric acid solution and cream of tartar solution. And it's pretty clear that the citric acid is the better acid to cause the reaction to happen more quickly and to produce more gas. So if students want to use a small amount of reactants, they should probably use citric acid as opposed to cream of tartar. Then since the reaction will have to happen in some kind of a bag, students put baking soda in the corner of a zip-closing plastic bag and then have a partner add citric acid solution. And we'll see whether the bag inflates enough or too much and students can through trial and error come up with the right amount of baking soda and citric acid solution to create a gas that fills the bag. So now students will test whether the volume of gas in the zip closing plastic bag is adequate to keep a cell phone floating. So if students use a model of a cell phone, it's basically a block of clay, the exact dimensions of a standard cell phone. It's very similar in density. So that dimension of clay will mimic very closely the weight of a cell phone. And it looks like the bag inflates enough to float the cell phone toward the surface so it can be rescued. You would have a discussion with students that this is a very early prototype of an invention to help a sinking cell phone float. So it would need to be some way for the reactants to mix when the cell phone maybe reached a certain depth or when it was wet for a certain period of time. There'd have to be some kind of sensor, some kind of trigger, some kind of mixing mechanism that would make the reactants combine to produce the gas. So these are all aspects that students could write about in order to optimize the design with the idea that reactants will be combined to form a gas inside of a bag to make a cell phone float. In the NGSS, there's three specific standards, third to fifth grade ETS 1-1, define a simple design problem reflecting a need or want that includes specified criteria for success and constraints on materials, time, or cost. You and students discuss the problem of the sinking cell phone and also discuss the criteria for success and the constraints that might make the design unsuccessful. For third to fifth grade ETS 1-2, generate and compare multiple possible solutions to a problem based on how well each is likely to meet the criteria and constraints of the problem. Students come up with the idea, with your help, that they would need to include two reactants that produce a gas and put them in a bag that will inflate to a point where the cell phone can float to the surface. And then third to fifth grade ETS 1-3, 
plan and carry out fair tests in which variables are controlled and failure points are considered to identify aspects of a model or prototype that can be improved. Well, here students test citric acid and cream of tartar as acids and mix them with the same amount of baking soda to see which one forms gas the fastest and the most gas that would inflate a bag quickly in order to float a cell phone to the surface. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, the students define the problem of the sinking cell phone. They plan and carry out investigations, trying to figure out the best way to design a device to make it float. For disciplinary core ideas, defining and delimiting engineering problems, developing possible solutions, and optimizing the design solution, students go through that process throughout the lesson. And cross-cutting concepts, the influence of engineering, technology, and science on society and the natural world, this idea that engineers use a design process to solve a problem that involves defining the problem, testing possible solutions, and then optimizing the solution. Students can realize that engineers do have an important role in helping society solve problems. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.